Howdy folks, you're listening to Smarticus Tells History, the podcast where we discuss some of the wacky and crazy stories your friends may have told you. So sit down, have a beer or two, and let's learn a thing or two. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show for episode number 14. I am your host, Smarticus. This week we once again find ourselves in the early 1700s. In 1717, the first of the Freemasons were formed. For those of you who don't know, the Freemasons are an extremely large fraternal secret society. Fraternal meaning that they only allowed men to join. Now, it is still to this day most popular over in the British Isles, but there are members in other countries as well. The clubs vary from country to country, and some do allow women. Now, it is estimated that it consists of approximately 2 to 6 million members. It was originally comprised of mostly stonemasons and cathedral builders, hence its name. Now, Freemasonry is not a religious order, although it is often mistaken for one. It supposedly regulates the qualifications of stonemasons. What does that mean exactly? I have no idea. They are just a big secret organization. They have been coming out of the shadows some in these later years, of course, but overall they are still extremely secretive about their organization. Now, I filled you in on this because in 1738, Pope Clement XII banned any Catholics from joining this fraternity. You see, the church was afraid that it was a breeding ground for dangerous political thoughts that would threaten the church. The Pope created a decree that was called the Papal Bull. The name of the decree itself is from the lead seal that was used to close and seal the documents, but the name is most important. The very same year, in 1738, a new order was founded. It called itself the Order of the Pug. Now, apparently this new order was founded by a man named Clemens August. He was the elector of Cologne and lived in Wittelsbach. The order had consisted of German Freemasons whom had altered their original society just enough so that they could continue to operate in their new forbidden activities. They chose the pug as their mascot due to its supreme loyalty and trust. Now, it's important to know, they took this canine stuff very seriously. New members, or mops as they called it, is German for pug, apparently. New members had to literally get down on all fours and walk around with a collar around their neck. They even had to paw or scratch at the entrance to the meeting place before they were allowed in. Now, when they were allowed in, they were led by the collar and leash while the other members wolfed and howled all around them. Oh, and that wasn't all they had to do. The Grand Master, or Head Pug, if you will, would place a pug in front of them and new members would have to kiss the behind of said pug to show loyalty and devotion. Now, luckily it was of the porcelain variety and not the living variety of the pug. Women were allowed to join the order later on. They were allowed all ranks except the Grand Master. However, there was a Grand Mistress. Now, the pair of them would take supreme authority, alternatively, each six months at a time. The introduction of women into the order brought about another porcelain pug. A much smaller version, in fact, in the arms of a porcelain woman named Princess Henriette Amalie of Anhalt de Sceaux, born 1720 and died 1793. She was an unmarried mother who had been exiled to a religious foundation for noble ladies at Hereford and was a canoness of Hereford. In her arms rested a pug with a pink collar and halfway concealed at her feet was a second pug, supposedly with a blue collar, although the photograph makes it look like it's also a pink collar. This kind of work was apparently fairly common, and eventually word got around about the society. Specifically, a book written about them in 1745, which became their ultimate demise. As the attitudes toward Freemasonry changed, the order of the pug supposedly fell short. However, Some traces of evidence show them remaining active all the way up until the early 1920s. It's possible that they are still barking orders and crawling around on all fours today and that their fall was just a master plan of secrecy. Now there is a Facebook page with the name Order of the Pug that does in fact have a lot of information about the order. I have no idea if they actually have anything to do with the actual order or anything of the like, but I did find that little fact interesting. Well, folks, that's all there is for this week's episode. I will also only be putting out one more episode next week for this season, and I hope to have Season 2 rolling out the first Friday of September. 
Check our Facebook page at Smart Arkansas Tells History for updated information. I'll see you all later. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you have heard any wacky and crazy stories that you want told here, you can go to our Facebook page at Smart Arkansas Tells History and leave a comment. Now, with that being said, I'll see you next time, and you guys have a wonderful, fantastic, and awesome day. Bye now.